Hello, Carrie here. Today I'm going to be making a wallet out of three envelopes. These are the envelopes that I bought in my supermarket challenge. I've glued them together and now I'm going to cover them in gesso to knock back that very bright yellow and to make sure that I can apply paint on top evenly. I do both sides and then I'm going to reinforce it with some tissue that is from the back of the napkins and I also use some of the sparkly tissue as well. Uh, partly I want to create a bit of texture as well. So I'm just gluing it on here and there and then I'll go to paint and then I'm going to do another layer of um, paper and tissue. I'm aiming to reinforce the edges of the envelopes as well because that, that'll be a weaker area, I feel. So there we go. I'm concentrating on the sides as well, because there'll be a weaker area, I feel, as well. And here's the sparkly tissue. I do like that. You can see some sparkles still remaining at the end. I think before I go into the paint, I need to reinforce the um, inside um, edges of the envelopes where things will be coming in and out like postcards and ATCs and things. So I've already done a bit of reinforcing with tissue. I'm just trimming the bits off now, especially where I've gone over the edges. There's a torn bit there that needs reinforcing. That's how easily it tears. So that's what it's looking like so far. So far, so good. So um, I've sewn all around the edges um, with a zigzag stitch. And now I'm going to reinforce the edges of the, um, the, you know, the insert bit with some washi tape, which I'm going to stick down with glue as well. Oops, that's crooked. Put that on again. Still a bit of playtime. There we go. And I'm going to do that on all three bits. So here they are done and trimmed. And now I'm going to go in with some paint. Just mixing some colours here, ultramarine blue and some magenta and some white, which, which I'm struggling with. There we go. I think I used gesso in the end. So I'm mixing it all up and I'm going to get a roller and apply the paint um, in various areas. This is a similar technique to the one I used for the um, small booklet I made recently. The idea at the moment is to create some depth and interest. So I've just applied different colours in various areas on them. And I do this on both sides. I allow the paint to dry in between layers. I'm using uh, some stencils to create some more interest. You may not be able to see them in the final piece. And some more stenciling. Just building up texture and interest on both sides. I'm allowing it to dry naturally. I haven't got um, a heat gun or hair dryer handy. And now I'm applying another layer of tissue, this time the sparkly tissue, just to create texture and to break up any um, overly quiet bits. And also to give it some more strength 
because those envelopes were rather floppy. So the more layers on it, the better. It's almost like papier-mâché by the end. <laughs> so I've done some more painting and now I'm going to go in some more. Again with the stencils. I'm introducing some lighter colour now. And a different stencil. Up until now they've all been ones I've made. But that was um, a commercial one. Again both sides. And I'll lay out to dry. lights coming in through the window that's a commercial stencil as well and here it is all painted up um, all it needs now is some varnish I think and a button and it'll be finished actually I've decided to reinforce it further I'm going to put some uh, stronger paper stroke cardboard um, inside the envelopes to give it a bit of uh, strength so I just need to cut those out I, can man I do manage to get three, three pieces out of that one uh, 12 by 12 sheet. And I'm using three and one glue to stick it down. I did try um, glue stick, but that didn't work. So three, because it's the acrylic. And I've rounded the corners as well. I've rounded the corners so they slip in easier and also it just looks pl more pleasant. So that's much better and in fact it feels better now it feels more sturdy so i'm going to add some stamping now i use these stays on and i'm afraid i missed that little bit of fo footage uh, i thought i turned it on but i hadn't so i'm just showing you what i did and because I liked what we did with the Kylie Koo booklet with the cut cut out circles i'm going to repeat that on this so there they are and I've drawn round them with a, um, a pencil and I'm going to use some of this tulip slick fabric paint which takes ages to try. So I do that on both sides and leave it to dry overnight. Right now it's the next day and I'm going to um, put the button on. These are the finishing touches now which is quite exciting. I've chosen this um, colour button because it stands out a bit more than the purple or the pink ones do. And just to cover that knot and to give it a bit of strength, I'm going to, I've cut out a circle to match the inserts and I'm going to put that on the back. Again, using three in one glue and a lot of it, <laughs> just to make sure it stays down. I suppose, and no, I can't sew around it because the button's in the way. No, it'll have to just be glue. This is good this is good glue, it will hold it well. Press it down firmly till it catches. Keep pressing it some more. I cut out a bit of the pressing. <laughs> there it is, that's stuck down beautifully now. Now I need to add just the string. Oh, and one thing I've done before I put the button on is I sprayed it with some spray varnish. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's enriched the, enriched the colours a bit more. And it finishes it off nicely. So I'm just going to pop some string around that button. Just knot it and cut off that little bit of end. And you can wind it around and there it is. I love it, it's beautiful. Now, I was thinking about what I was going to put inside and I did think of the 80s, 80Cs that I made recently, whether they could be slotted in. And I thought perhaps an envelope actually attached uh, would be quite nice. I know three could fit in there, but then I've made four, so that doesn't work. But I did wonder um, if I could make some glassine envelopes now I have these little, uh, I think they're called wage envelopes, or they used to be wage envelopes. I use them for collecting seeds in the garden, but I'm going to use that as a template. So I've deconstructed the envelope and I'm now gluing it down to some card. And I'm going to cut around the card and use that as a template. 
So there's my template and now I'm going to draw around on the grease proof paper and cut that out. I was very excited when I saw Kylie Koo's glassine envelopes, I must say. Faux glassine envelopes, they were lovely. In fact, all of them, all of the envelopes were lovely. So now I've got to figure out how to put it together. So you fold in the narrower side, looking at the um, original one. That goes in first, then the bigger side goes over. So I just need to glue that. And then the bottom comes up and then the top comes down. So it's quite easy, really. So I'm going to glue that. Glue the bottom. I'm going to leave the top open, obviously. Slot my... Um, yeah, fold that down first and then go to slot the ATC in. This is very nice if you like to do ATC swaps, I think. It helps protect them in transit if you're sending them somewhere. That's what it looks like. You can still see it. I love that. I think I'll make some more of those. And I quite, quite, can't quite decide whether to affix it or just slot it inside. At the moment, I'm just going to put it aside and think about it. But... I'm pleased with the envelope challenge. I've enjoyed making this wallet. It took a while and I did wonder whether I was failing at it at one stage, but I persevered and I'm glad I did. There's space for postcards, all sorts really, little booklets, all sorts. I've left the string long because in case it gets a bit fatter with the contents, the string can accommodate that. there so there's the wallet and there's the faux glassine envelope i hope you enjoyed watching this thank you very much bye